Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. I'm happy to be with you today. I hope you're having a good week. I am. I expect to have a great week. I hope you do too. I want to continue in the encouraging words and the good news from the Gospel of John. Again, from the first chapter, like I did yesterday, just a few words, beginning with verse 38. Reads this way. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying. And they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to his brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. Well, this story is about history. See, the Jews have been waiting for the Messiah for thousands of years. Ever since Moses, actually. The one who would come and reveal the kingdom of God and bring salvation to the nation. And over those years, if you'd waited thousands of years for something, you might get a little discouraged. <laughs> Heck, you and I get discouraged if we have to wait two days sometimes, much less a year. We've all been fouled up with this COVID mess. It's been over a year now, and a lot of us are just sick of it. And I hear on the television and other places, I just want to get back to normal. Well, imagine waiting a thousand years or two, hoping, praying, anticipating, expecting God's promise to be fulfilled. Well, that's how John did it when he was walking around on the earth, baptizing people, and including Jesus. And and his followers were with him when Jesus came along. And, and Andrew was one of the first. He heard Jesus. There must have been something special about that man. I mean, I can read his words. You can too. And I can try to read them with some reflection and try to put some meaning into it. And you can too. But golly. To have heard him utter those words directly. It must have been transforming. People just sat and, and were amazed at this man. Well, Andrew, being the good brother that he is, goes and finds his other brother, Peter. And he tells him something which I want to tell you today. The good news is, the encouraging point, is that Andrew says to Peter, I have found the Messiah. I found him. He's really here. He really is alive. I know that he's here. Well, that was about 2,000 years ago when Andrew said that. You and I haven't waited 2,000 years for the Messiah. We've lived in an era where the Christian church was dominant, most of us. Maybe we've heard the gospel more times than we can count. Maybe we've heard the Easter and Christmas story more times than, than anybody imagines. Maybe we've even gone to church a whole bunch. And we've heard things over and over and over and over and over again. But yet, there's something different between hearing all of that and actually finding the Messiah. You see, Jesus wants to be actively engaged in your life. Every moment of it. And particularly so when you're struggling. Now, it's easy to follow Jesus when everything's going right. 
You can ride on that on that that high road to where, gosh, isn't life beautiful? But for many folks, that's not where they are. They're somewhere else. Some are getting close to there. Some are just starting. Some are way down in the bottom, still trying to find a way out. At that very moment, Jesus comes to you and to me and says, here I am. Come and follow me. Corey Ten Boom, who was uh, not a Jew, but a Dutch lady captured by the Nazis, wrote a book, uh, became famous in the 70s and 80s. She's passed away now. She talked about her sister. And she and her sister were in the concentration camp together. Her sister didn't survive. But she talked about her, how her sister used to say, however deep you are in trouble, Jesus is deeper still. See, Corey Ten Boom and her sister found the Messiah. He's here. He has come. He's here for you. He's here for me. He's here for anyone who wants to reach out and touch him. Who wants guidance. Who wants companionship. Who wants assurance. You know, this, is, this can be a tough world. Nobody really cares about you. I mean, the world doesn't. If you make it or don't make it, the world doesn't care. It just keeps going. You do a funeral, and before you finish the funeral, cars pass by the, the, the road, and they're off to wherever they're going. They're not thinking about it. You. But yet God always is. Every moment of your life, he's thinking about you. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he cares. So today, I'd like for you to just get real quiet for a minute and think about where is God in your life? Is he at the center of it? If he is, fantastic. Ray, that's great. If he's not, well, let him be there. What do you got to lose? You know, if you let God direct your life, and you know that with God directing, you can't fail. You may not do what you thought you were going to do, but whatever it is you're doing, you can't fail. And if you let God direct your life, you know that whatever happens, there's a way through it. How big or small, doesn't matter. There, there's a pathway through. What do you got to lose? By inviting God into your whole life. Will you think about that? Appreciate you listening. If you have any concerns or needs, let us know. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, good. <laughs> well, pardon me, my friends. Just goes to show that these things aren't perfect. So thanks for listening. <laughs> Hope you have a great day. That wasn't quite the way I planned to end this thing. God bless you. And I'll talk to you again. <laughs>